first of all, there's the anticipation. For me, each time they go level three, you go, oh, level four, uh-oh, level five, I actually go into a bit of a shiver. I am now just thinking about it. Tropical cyclones, by their very nature, are powerful and destructive, bringing with them very damaging winds, heavy rainfall, flooding and dangerous storm surges. They pose a serious threat to Western Australian communities. The northwest coastline between Broome and Exmouth is the most cyclone-prone region of the entire Australian coastline with the highest frequency of coastal crossings. And as that region is also one of the most intense tropical cyclone regions in the world, it's probably safe to say that we probably see more cyclone activity there than anywhere else in the Southern Hemisphere and even in the Northern Hemisphere as well. The clear message we've tried to get out to the community is that the risk to any individual town doesn't really vary from year to year. And if you're not impacted by a cyclone, you've had a good year. But if you get hit by a cyclone, it's been a bad year. The cyclone season occurs over northern Western Australia between November and April each year. On average, about five tropical cyclones form during each season over the warm ocean waters off the northwest coast. Of those five, usually two cross the coast, one of which is severe. Each tropical cyclone season is different. However, the risk of coastal impact is always present. But generally we have a trend where the cyclone moves from the east to the west and at some point it does what we call a recurve path. And that recurve path will then move it down towards our southeast. And if it does that and it comes level with the coast, then it's going to start to hit the Pilbara coast or the Kimberley coast or perhaps potentially even the Midwest coast. So that whole zone is at risk with this recurve. It's important to remember that any cyclone has the potential to cause major damage. One such town that often bears the brunt of Mother Nature during the wet season is Port Hedland. With a population of approximately 20,000, the once tiny coastal town has grown into one of the biggest and busiest mineral ports. Port Hedland is now home to the world's largest bulk tonnage port, exporting 372.3 million tonnes per annum. Known as the gateway to the Pilbara, this diverse coastline also experiences more cyclones than any other part of Australia. Since 1910, there have been 55 cyclones that have caused gale force winds or stronger at Port Hedland, which equates to about one every two years. This year marks the 40th anniversary since Tropical Cyclone Joan, one of the most significant cyclones in WA's history. Crossing the coast 50 kilometres west of Port Hedland on the 8th of December 1975, Tropical Cyclone Joan brought with it winds of more than 200 kilometres per hour. 85% of the town's homes were damaged, especially along the ocean front. The local hospital was also destroyed with a total cost of building repairs running into the millions. My first cyclone experience with Port Hedland would be in 1964. And since then I have been through 27 cyclones. And of course the biggest one of the lot was a Cyclone Joan. And Cyclone Joan had a greater velocity than uh, Tracy, the destruction of houses. Uh, Cyclone Joan was very dramatic and I think if I remember rightly we had something like about 20 million dollars worth of damage and of course the biggest thing in those days that people didn't realise some of those houses were 10, 15 years old and people had only insured them for the purchase price so you know that, that tremor in, and change in economics had a dramatic effect on this whole town. So Kirsty was born five months before Cyclone Joan hit Port Hedler, so we had no power at all. And I was having to light a wood barbecue with wet wood to boil water to sterilise her bottle. As she grew up and left school and she was moving away from home for the very first time, she was 23 years of age, and moving down to Exmouth. And I went down with her and got her settled in the house and the house that she had been given um, had the cyclone screens, it had tie downs, it had everything and it put my mother's mind at rest and um, left her to start her new job and I drove back up to Port Hedland. Well, 10 weeks later, Cyclone Vance bore down on 
Exmouth. And I rang her and I said, now, Kirsty, you know what to do? And she said, yeah, mum, I know. And don't forget, yeah, mum, I know. And d d I know, mum, you know, typical 23-year-old. Well, that was at 7 o'clock in the morning. I went to work by 9 o'clock in the morning. She rang me. She was screaming. The roof's blown off. I'm in the bathroom. Like, and I've never felt so useless in all my life as to hear your child terrified and not being able to do anything. Located 1,270 kilometres north of Perth, Exmouth is on the tip of the Northwest Cape in Western Australia. First used as a military base in World War II, the coastal town now supports local industries such as fishing, tourism, building and construction. The picturesque Exmouth Gulf also lies in the path of dangerous tropical cyclones during the wet season. One of the strongest cyclones to hit mainland Australia, Tropical Cyclone Vance, passed down the Gulf on the 22nd of March 1999. While damage to the town was extensive, it was the 3.5 metre storm surge that followed that caused widespread destruction near the marina. When it hit for the next three hours or so, oh, it's quite scary because we were in the old SES building and the roof was lifting about 10 inches, you know, we were thinking it was going to go. Constant calls all the time, you know, help, help, the houses disintegrating and tipping over. But all we could do was tell them to go into the shelters. When we got through that, I think in the end there was about 120 houses damaged badly and, and there was quite a few other minor damages, windows blowing in, things like that. Total infrastructure failure, power lines down, power poles bent, big task to get it back up. We got a whole heap of generators in, so we got some of the main areas like the shopping centres, the petrol stations and that with emergency generators, but the bulk of the town was out of power for about six weeks. More recently, Exmouth experienced the ferocity of a Category 3 tropical cyclone on the 13th of March 2015. Severe tropical cyclone Olwen tracking very close to the coast and eventually crossing east of Denham. Wind gusts of over 200 kilometres per hour. The cyclone was also due to hit on a high tide uh, which caused a bit of panic uh, around town. We ended up having to evacuate residents of the marina area and also tourists staying at the Ningaloo Novotel Resort. We transferred them to evacuation centres, which was the Shire Hall, the Truscott Club. Yeah, there are a number of reports around town that it actually did more damage than Vance. It had power lines down. Uh, we had some places with roofs off, uh, overturned boats, caravans, etc. A lot of trees down and a lot of water damage as well. Big boulders all over the road. Some roads were inaccessible. The Department of Fire and Emergency Services issues community alerts regularly during a cyclone. It's vital that residents, workers and tourists are all aware of the cyclone alert levels and what they mean. A blue alert means you need to get ready as a cyclone is approaching. Yellow alert means it's time to take action and move to shelter. When a red alert is issued, you need to stay in the strongest, safest part of the building you're in until the all clear is given. It is extremely dangerous and an offence to be outside during a red alert. Highlights, one of the issues I think with all cyclones we get is people are still driving around on the streets trying to look at the floodways and sticky beak and they don't realise how much danger they're in because if something hits their car, you know, it can pierce right through and, you know, next thing they're in real trouble. So we always try and say, stay indoors and only come out if it's really necessary. With the cyclone season upon us, now is the time to put your plans into action. There are simple steps you can take to prepare your home and family for cyclones. Tidy up around your property by securing any loose items that could become projectiles in strong winds. Trim branches and treetops and fix shutters or metal screens to all of your glass windows and doors. Prepare a plan and make sure everyone in your family is familiar with it. Think about what you will do during a cyclone. Will you shelter in your home or relocate to a safer place? What will you do with your pets? Have an emergency kit ready including a portable radio, torch, spare batteries, mobile phone, first aid kit and enough food and water for at least four days. 
Know how to switch off the electricity, gas and water at your property. Monitor Bureau of Meteorology forecasts and warnings online and listen to your local ABC radio. If there is also the risk of flooding, learn what official river height will cause your home to be flooded. Develop a household flood plan and ensure you and your family know what to do. Have your emergency kit and your relocation kit ready and ensure you and your family know where they are stored. Make sure your home is prepared. Secure hazardous items, roll up rugs, move furniture, electrical goods and valuables to a higher level. Place important personal documents, valuables and vital medical supplies into a waterproof case in an accessible location. Don't be complacent. Make sure you know and understand the risks associated with cyclones and flooding. If you're not prepared for the worst, you are putting yourself in danger. By learning from past experiences, you're preparing yourself for significant weather events that might impact your family, home or workplace in the future. I suppose I used to have this little saying, you know, cyclones are like relatives. You know, they come every year and they stay for a little while. And they make a mess and then you Next year, I hope they go and visit someone else. <laughs> For more information on how to stay safe this season, download a copy of Cyclone Smart from the DFES website, www.dfes.wa.gov.au. It only takes one cyclone to change your life and your community.